So let's talk about recurrent disease. That's the fun part, right? That's the, uh, and, and we have uh, some very uh, exciting new data to present to you about recurrent disease. Since the last time we did one of these, which was just a few months ago, we have gotten two new PARP inhibitors approved. Last time we spoke, we had one, Olaparib. Now we have Recaparib and Nerapirib, and we're gonna go through that. Uh, and in fact, right before our last Onc Live, we had just gotten Bevacizumab, approved in platinum-sensitive relapse. We've now had time to digest that. So essentially, within the last six months, we've had three new, new. approvals right. of targeted therapy. Yeah. Two PARP inhibitors and antiangiogenesis. It's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to throw the Pembro in there, you can you a little bit tiny little, <laughs> tiny little Tiny little market. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what are the factors uh, that you consider, uh, uh, Gottfried, in, in making therapeutic decisions in recurrent ovarian cancer? What are the factors? Uh, well, definitely um, having the information on tailored treatments uh, towards PARP, uh, whether a BRCA mutation is there or not. So molecular signature. Molecular signature is important. I think, um, again, the number of prior lines. Number of, of prior lines, I love it. What types of chemotherapy were given, platinum sensitive, platinum resistant. Maybe time from last platinum right. or time, right? And then quality of life issues. What Thank what you. what what does the patient expect from treatment or not? And there are wonderful options available right now. Rob, how important mm. is cell type in treating recurrent ovarian cancer? So I'm molecular signature, number of lines of therapy, platinum free interval, and kind of the residual toxicities. How important is cell type? So I mean, you know, I think as it's becoming more and more important because of those other factors. So uh, the molecular signatures, so outside of BRCA versus non-BRCA, now for many of us who have trials in this setting, we are finding uh, agents that would be focused on those specific defects. So for instance, clear cell has a frequent alteration of um, P3 kinase, MAP kinase pathways, and now even a. with, with uh, ERD1A, which right. may lead us to the um, EZ, EZH2 uh, inhibitors, which are now emerging. So it's a whole, and, and it may actually then also get into, Matt's point is that we may have higher mutational loads that potentially in that situation, it may be um, isolate us or uh, direct us to IO uh, use Based on based on those features. So, Matt, do you treat let's say mucinous recurrent ovarian cancer the same way you would do the more typical high grade serous? You know, I wish we had enough data to make that decision, but uh, we typically yeah we try <laughs> we to randomize try, trial. We try to randomize trial. Hard. Too hard too in the hard. upfront setting, and obviously, I, I really think that's much more of a GI focus as our has been the trend. Mm -hmm. And I think Mike Fromovitz at MD Anderson's led some of that effort. But we do tend to, I work a lot with my GI oncologists, and mm -hmm. they're typically getting more GI regiments. Like HIPEC. Yeah. They're, they're, but, and I think there is maybe a role for HIPEC in those too. patients, I too. I but to yeah. that point, you know, we see higher levels of HER2 alteration copy number variances. So, you know, this is an area where um, focusing on those types of, of agents or cyclin-dependent uh, kinase yeah. aberration. So we see them right. more frequently in these particular cell types. How about low-grade serous, Katie? Is you, do you treat low-grade serous recurrent ovarian cancer differently than high-grade? Obviously, high-grade <laughs> high serous has people. Glad she gets all the controversial questions. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we're starting to. Yeah. The you know, it's a rare subtype of a rare tumor. And so studies are kinase alterations rather than p53 signature. So you know, they're often platinum sensitive just because we've debulked them. They got chemo and then they kind of were out a period of time, but we don't really feel like that has the same prognostic implications as it does in high grade. So it's really not uncommon to have a platinum sensitive low grade that you don't retreat with platinum necessarily, um, or you might, but it doesn't tend to work once it comes back. Mm. So we, um, we sequence them as we've been talking about. We look for those genomic alterations. We look um, hard for BRAF, um, which is about eight to 12%, depending on the series. Um, of course, the MEC uh, data is still emerging. Um, we look at hormone status. We're looking at mutations in hormone status to try and figure out what hormone to use or what hormone blocker to use in that population. Mm -hmm. Bevacizumab is an active drug. Yes, absolutely. Um, based on case series, but pretty big case series from right. big cancer centers. So we do treat them differently. They get all the same stuff. But low-grade serous is definitely different. It's a different definitely. disease. And it's, it's, a, it's a hormone disease, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's a MEC disease, maybe. It's a bevacizumab disease, maybe. It's and a I, surgical disease. Thank you. Yes, it's it a is. surgical Dr. disease. Dr. Powell, that's yes. right. Yeah. Much more likely to, I mean, I think those patients, yeah, much more likely to reoperate on those patients. Now, the question is, am I helping them? Yeah. 
But the patients they don't respond. Still, the patients end do up well. But you know, the medical oncologist. The thing is, is that everybody ends yeah. up there. The thing is, though, that because point. it's in the ovary, we're so yeah. connected to having to have to use chemo. Yeah. And this is a disease where even if we find equivalence to chemo. I'd love to have that option because yeah. these patients are on, they don't progress rapidly, so they're gonna get a lot of exposure, and they get imaged way too much, and, uh, and, and as Katie mentioned, you know, there's a, there's a way to recycle and use multiple different hormonal apps. Yeah. I think you exhaust is, the hormonal it is, pathway. Yeah. It yeah. is the, the trove to dive in where you have molecular alteration. Absolutely, okay, yeah. right. So all the things that are progressing in other diseases, such as CDK4-6 inhibition, exactly. hormone receptor yeah. signaling, exactly. right. uh, BEV. Uh, we need better and more coordinated trials for low-grade serous because they're relatively rare. And remember, the, the MEK inhibitor trial had to close because of futility well, analysis. Well, I'll have it next year to ask. That's not that simple. <laughs> well, okay. But again, there are very hard trials to do with the, all are. the calcification. I think recess criteria it's is very probably difficult. very suspect for following these patients because those cancers don't die. They calcify. Very difficult. Yeah, yeah. I agree.